a lot of this too is just recognizing like when you align these things, your mind, your body, your effort, it's now it's like you're never actually working because it's just like I would do this whether I was getting paid or not. Hello, and welcome to Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. This podcast is dedicated to chiropractors who are in the seasons of launching and building their practice. Join myself, Dr. Lona, and my co-host, Dr. Bobby, as we have conversations each week as it relates to building the practice of your dreams. And remember, you can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. We are here to lead you on the way. What's up, team? Welcome back to the Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast with myself, Dr. Bobby Eljassi, and my amazing co-host, Dr. Lona Cook. Dr. Lona, I'm excited for today's topic because we know in chiropractic, we say this all the time, that energy is everything. We're doctors of the nervous system, which is the energy system. We know that when we're putting out amazing energy, we're going to get back in amazing energy, yet we see this problem in the profession so much that people are being low on energy. So I'm so excited to talk about this topic. I know that you're someone who's full of energy for chiropractic and for life, so I'm pumped to be discussing this with you today. Yes, thank you. Me too. Um, I love talking about energy and I love talking about chiropractic, so this is going to be my favorite uh, podcast, I think. (laughs) I love it. I love it. That's awesome. So let me talk about what we're going to be going deeper on in today's podcast, guys. So when it comes to achieving success in life, one of the things that I recognize is that the energy that you put out into the world is the energy that you get back. And if you look at CEOs of companies, we talk about in our remarkable CEO program that CEO really should stand for Chief Energizing Officer. So you see this theme of energy so commonly across business, across life, people who are thriving in life or getting the most from life are exuding this force of energy. You can feel it. You can see it in people. When you walk into a room and you see someone's energized, yeah, you can see it. And that energy is like a magnetic force. Like people gravitate towards other energetic people. I like to say that you will bring people up to your vibrational frequency. Truly. Or they'll say that again, sorry? I said truly. Yeah, absolutely. You will bring people up to your vibrational frequency. I say to people on our coaching calls, every single client that comes in, you've got to recognize where their energy is sitting, where they're vibrating, and you've got to be a level above that vibration. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... You don't have to be 10 levels above it, but slightly above that level of vibration. So they leave your office in a better energetic state than what they actually um, mm-hmm. found you in. So we know that it's such, a, such an important part of the success. We call it the sixth start of our Rubik's Cube. We talked about in our Remarkable CEO program, there's six things that you need to master in order to build a badass business. Vision, leadership. Then we need to look at systems. Then we need to look at team. We need to look at training. And the sixth start of the Rubik's Cube we need to look at is what's called energy. How do we have rhythms and routines, systems in place to ensure that our energy is 10 out of 10 and that we're giving, loving, and serving from a full cup and not an empty cup? Mm. So today we're going to be talking about, A, we see so many chiropractors in the profession that are low on energy, that are getting down, that are getting rejected. So we're going to talk about, first of all, that issue, okay, and what causes it, where it comes from, so we recognize it. And then let's talk about strategies so we can supercharge your energy to the moon make you completely in love with what you're doing every single day because I would argue that's fundamentally paramount in order to achieve success on a sustainable level. You have to absolutely fall in love with chiropractic with what you do every single day inside of the office. So, Lana, I'm going to hand this over to you. Why don't you take us through, okay, first of all, what is the issue that we see here? Why is it that so many offices, so many chiropractors can fundamentally be de-energized? What are they doing wrong? What's going on? Why is there so much of this happening? Yeah. And I I don't think it's just chiropractors, right? We can look around at the world at large and see a lot of people who are very disconnected, right? They're disconnected from themselves, first of all. um, And they're disconnected from like what fills them up, like knowing that this like vital force we have, you know, in chiropractic, we say the words vital life force, like that, that is part of it is we want to move with energy. But if we've been disconnected for a long time from ourselves, it's tough to even know what that means, right? So, you know, I think part of it is to to first ask yourself, you know, if I feel like I'm not that energized or I don't maybe love going to the office. And that doesn't mean that every day is going to be your best day ever. It just means like, do I wake up and like have like stamina for my day? Like, am I energized about what I do? And if I'm not, 
have I met someone that is, right? Like, have I ever been around a chiropractor that does feel that way? And, you know, hopefully you can feel that from Bobby and I, because I would say we are both two very energized chiropractors and it shows in our businesses and the way that we want to bring chiropractic to the world. But it doesn't mean that we started like day one, like who we are right now. And part of that is recognizing like when you get around people who feel that way, that's the people you want to be around and like spend some time and see how they talk about chiropractic and what did they learn about and who, you know, what avenues did they like find themselves in that got them to this point where like chiropractic is like very much their like purpose in life to you know, get their feet hit in the floor and, and get to work on these things. And that's where that energy comes is when you feel like really filled up by the work you do. So some of it is recognizing if it's not you, okay, is it that I haven't really caught the big idea yet? Like maybe I don't really understand chiropractic and I need to get somewhere and, and learn about this. For me, that was really important. I needed to learn about chiropractic on a deeper level. I needed to get around philosophical chiropractors. And I also think sometimes we're so in our heads that we don't let things flow. Like maybe there's a lot of negative self-talk, you know, you're always worried, like, why does this person not want what I have to say? Or why didn't this person get better? And we're making it all about me, <laughs> right? Like, why didn't they like me? Or why didn't they want that? And we need to get out of our head. So that will help our energy as well as to recognize, like, we're not playing God here. We can just keep getting better and better at what we do, which is delivering a, you know, a strong message and great adjustments and getting better each day, but to not put so much heavy energy that you need to be like perfect or like that somehow whatever happened yesterday means that today is going to be a failure too. Like we got to be able to also just come back to neutral and that will help our energy come up. So, you know, for me, those are our critical points and just recognizing like there's a lot of mental um, self-talk that sometimes has to get, you know, we have to have awareness and start to change that. And then we also need to search out some people who can help us like come back into this, like falling in love with chiropractic and falling in love with the opportunity we have to serve people and seeing that we actually can make a go of this. Like sometimes you've maybe thought like, maybe I'm not going to be successful in chiropractic and realize like that's a choice to think that. And I believe that everyone can change and reframe how they go about this and, and create what they desire, but they're going to have to change their belief system around it. Yeah, you said something I want to rewind for a second there. You said it's not just chiropractic. This happens in the world surrounding us. And I think yeah, you're spot on the mark with that. I think if you just stop for a moment and pause and reflect, the unfortunate reality is is that apathy slash low motivation slash going through the motions, call it what you want, is absolutely profound, us, a profound around us. It is all over the place. And so we need to be careful because if we're not aware of that, then this stuff can naturally rub off onto us. Mm -hmm. Now, I would go also one step deeper with this and say, in chiropractic, we're in a profession where, we're, where we spend a lot of energy, we're interacting with a lot of different people. People are borrowing our energy, they're leaning on us. So in the beginning, you know, we want every single person to get better. We want every single person to convert into care. We want every single new patient to sign up and say, yes, I'm going to come in or every, sorry, lead prospect to come in and say, I'm coming in. And so the reality is we do face a lot of rejection. We face a lot of, oh, you know, I always to this day can still get frustrated by that person who we're talking to them wherever at a live event that we're doing and they've had all these issues and oh my goodness, yeah, like you really feel for them. They're like, I've been having this and that and my energy is shot and I feel down and depressed and I have been having chronic pain for years and I haven't been sure what to do about it. And then when you say, great, fantastic, let's get you in right now there's a special assessment going on and then they still give me some half ass reason <laughs> of like why they can't, okay? Oh, I just, I don't have the time. And, and to this day, so I'm like, are you freaking kidding? What is wrong with these people? <laughs> and, you know, you still have that moment of like rejection where you're like, are you kidding me? What? Or, you know, in a report, you have the person that comes in and they've had this chronic stuff. It's kind of like this big unsolved mystery. They've got no idea what's going on. That you know, we, we have this connection with them. We almost feel for them. And then we go through their exam findings. We look at their x-ray and bang, it's clear as daylight in the x-ray. You see it right there. You're like, oh, my goodness, here's this cause of so much of it. This person is so excited. Look at their pelvis. Look, look at the misposition now position of the parallels, look at the stress that's putting here. We found it. We've got the answers. Yes, I'm pumped, excited to deliver this to the person. They're going to be jumping straight into this. And then you give them the report and, oh, okay, yeah, it's really good. 
Cool. Okay. Well, that was really a lot of education. Thank you so much. You know, let me have a think about that and I'll get back to you. And you're like pulling your hair out going, what? Right. Okay. So you do face this and you continue to face this, you know, indecision, continue to face this procrastination, continue to face this, um, this rejection, I guess you could look at at time. And if you don't recognize it, it can very easily start to eat away at your energy and then it starts to create a tainted picture or a tainted mind for yourself that you put out to the world. You did a good job explaining that because I know we've all been there. And um, that's also why our tribes are so important, like being, you know, whether it's the tribe you work in the four walls of your office with or Bobby, you know, we have our TRP tribe or, you know, your state association. You've got other like minded chiropractors who are really in the thick of it with you. Like they're in, like, as we say, the trenches with you, you know, they know, like, they're having hard conversations too. Like that becomes so critical the longer you're in practice, I think. And certainly as a new doc, you went from maybe being in a cohort in school to all of a sudden on your own, especially if you launched a practice and it can feel pretty isolating sometimes. So I think, you know, all of us need community. I was just on a podcast earlier this week and we were talking about how critical a community is in like your, you know, birth and postpartum and asking those questions and understanding like, you know, I've got this new baby, what's normal, what's abnormal, and how do I go about this? Well, same is true with the business, right? Like it's your new baby, right? And if you're building it, like, you know, you want to have that group of chiropractors around you, um, both physically and, you know, virtually that can help speak life into things so that you can stay energi- energized and not tripped up over these things that we all go through, but some of us get more, you know, more pulled apart at the seams sometimes when they occur than others. Yeah. Totally. So let's go there. Let's talk about strategies. Okay. So yes, I recognize this. Not many people need convincing of this. What are some strategies? You just mentioned a couple there about getting plugged into a tribe, but you know, you've been doing this for a long time. You've been growing also consistently for a long time. So there's obviously a formula success leaves clues. Why don't you take me through what are some of your biggest strategies to keep you energized, keep your mind in the game. And as a result of that, keep you at 10 out of 10 level energy and, you know, growing and moving, moving, moving mission forward. You know, Bobby, I probably have said this to you before, but for me, it was an interesting um, evolution because it was like I was learning chiropractic philosophy and then simultaneously I was learning a lot about like building success and understanding like law of attraction and like the, the idea to that, like here we have Dee Dee Palmer, who was obsessed with magnetism and like vital force. And then we also are learning like universal laws, like there really is magnetic energy to us and our thoughts and all of that. And so in that process, I really, um, I think a book that made a huge impact on me is called Power Versus Force. And it talks a lot about the concept around human states. And so where I start always is with myself and re- recognize like we all have had things where we get angry. Um, and usually if we stay in that place of anger, right, what, what do we usually experience more of? More to get angry about, right? You have a choice in your mind to change the channel, to set your barometer at a different like place, right? And for most of us, we maybe get to a point where we realize I do have a choice here. Like I don't have to, just because I normally react a certain way, it doesn't mean I always have to react that way. I can start to breathe. I can start to like decide I want to feel joy right now instead of anger, or I want to feel peace or neutrality. And so I I tend to say that like my first place I go now is both I just check in with my own state because I recognize my tone and my in, my internal energy is now like creating everything else I'm experiencing, right? So if I don't like where my set point is, I feel anger, I feel, uh, you know, sadness, I feel apathy, I feel whatever, I, I'm going to do the things that help me get my energy back to a better place. For me, that's like sometimes as easy as going for a run, having a conversation with a friend, you know, getting my mind right before I then do next steps. But that's where I start. How about you, Bobby? Yeah, so uh, I think number one place for me where I start is looking after and taking care of myself. So everything you mentioned in some capacity is taking care of yourself. You're talking about connecting with friends. You're talking about going for a run. Those are all things that I do as well. So taking care of myself for me starts with the basics of everything that I'm teaching my practice members to do, I'm doing. So I'm exercising training five days a week. Um, usually I'll be training in the mornings. I train at 5 a.m. because I realize if I don't train at 5 a.m., usually things take me sideways as the day goes as the day goes on. So taking care of myself, making sure that I'm getting enough sleep. Sleep is so fundamental to the way that you function. I know you'll go through seasons and periods 
where they're right now, okay, with an 18 month old, where maybe sleep gets taken away from you somewhat. But the reality is that sleep is a fundamental and you should have staying healthy. Then it extends further into, okay, I'm sleeping well and regularly. And I use, I use technology, things like the aura ring has helped me a lot of heart rate variability in my practice. Um, I measure regularly. Then I extend into exercise. I make sure I'm training regularly five times a week. Now, on top of that, let's then break it down. We go into nutrition routines. So how do we eat? So in my household, we eat everything very clean, whole foods. If it's from Mother Nature, right, and it's something that fits into our whole food and it's paleo, we're going to consume that. If something is manufactured and put in that form, it really is just full of shit. It's not for us. So what we're eating and what we're consuming, it pours into that. Then from there, we're going to go further into okay, what you just said in terms of social circles, hanging with friends. I have naturally always done this pretty well and had this balance nicely laid out. But that is absolutely huge. Making sure that you're finding time to connect with people that you love connecting with, that share core values. As I grew older, the more that I realized is the people that I truly like to spend time with, um, not the people that maybe in my teens, and early 20s, I thought was the right people to spend time with. What I recognize is no, it's the people that you share core values with. Core values are the things that are most important to you in your life. And when you find other people that share those core values, stick with them, they'll energize you. So build rhythms and routines around that. If you want to maintain a relationship, you've got to pour into that relationship. Um, then from there, on, I go and I make sure that I'm getting adjusted regularly, obviously. So I'm on a care plan. I'm doing all the objective tests and measurements that I ask of my practice members. I'm doing them as well. So I start with a healthy body because that leads to a healthy mind. Then more recently, you know, when I say more recently, probably the last couple of years, we've invested more into and gone down a path a lot more of things like infrared sauna, ice bathing. Um, I love that effects that that has on me, the way that, the way that, um, the way that it calms my body, but at the same time puts me in the right state. So more often than not, I'm doing my ice bath um, in the morning after I train. So I know that some data out there says not the best time to do it after training because you kind of stop some muscle growth, but I usually will train at 5 a.m. Then I'll ice bath at 6. Um, so by the time I'm rolling into the office at like 7 a.m. Um, or slightly before 7 a.m., I'm like, a freaking steamship ready to rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> so that, that is a huge part. And then, of course, we try and stick to the week 13 principle in a way. You know, we go hard for 12 weeks and the week 13, it's vacation time. Take time off. Um, we just came back from a trip about four weeks ago. We're in Byron for a week, which is a beautiful beach town suburb here in Australia. Uh, in the middle of the year, we go to Europe for a few weeks. Usually most years we'll do that. At the end of the year, we'll take two, uh, two weeks off around Christmas and another shorter break typically around the uh, end of q3 so regular breaks absolutely sharpens us all for me and i know that it does to everyone that i coach everyone that i work with it's one of the biggest things that they do that when they come back they're on fire and they're just rolling at 100 miles an hour mm, so good bobby thank you for that and i think you one of the things you said that i don't want to like glance over is he said that whatever he does for his practice members he is also being measured by those and on a care plan for himself. Um, and it, it seems like we shouldn't have to say that in chiropractic, but I think we really do that, you know, sometimes, especially if you don't practice with another doc and you may have to drive a while to go get checked, like your, your ability to have your nervous system checked routinely by somebody who's actually looking at you like you're their practice member and giving you recommendations and like letting you know about the like state of your nervous system and spine, like that, should be built into all of our chiropractic um, regimens for ourselves, especially because we're bending over people adjusting all day long. You know, there's so many layers to that. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't have your name on somebody else's schedule to get adjusted, like that is a must. Mm, 100%. So all the things we mentioned so far are very physical in nature from exercise to nutrition, okay, uh, looking up the physical body. But what he talked to me a little bit also about the mental aspect. So I know I can start off with this. Things that for me that are really critical and really important is making sure that I'm super clear with my purpose. So I've identified my core values. I'm clear with my purpose, my vision, my mission. I know exactly why I'm trying to build my practice. I know exactly what my purpose um, in the world right now in this very moment. I also look at things like giving back. So even from the beginning, very early in my career when I wasn't making much money at all, um, I was still giving back. I was donating different foundations, different charities that were aligned with my core values, my purpose. And I found that those things really helped inspire me because it made it bigger than just about myself. So when I was trying to grow, I was making an impact. It wasn't just, oh, I want to see more dollars in Bobby's account. It was like actually bigger than Bobby. 
Um, I'd like to hear a few words or if you could share a couple of things around that learner for yourself as well. Like, have you found the same? Is there things that you do around that that have helped you also from a non-physical yeah. aspect? Yeah, I love that you said like, you know, we're moving from physical to like more like mental, emotional. And I, I think I think that's actually a natural progression. I think sometimes we have to get the physical things in order and then you start to actually like those habits are cultivating more awareness to your mind body then as well. I don't know if you feel that way too, Bobby, but um, you know, whatever floats your cork, you know, like that should be built into your routine. And some of that is physical choices that make you feel better. But some of it also is like, you know, I have young boys and, you know, my best moments in my week are when I get to snuggle both of them at the same time. And like, I have now like started to give myself more grace than I ever used to. And and I think I actually have more energy. Like I used to be like, okay, I'm always working out. I'm always running. I'm always doing the thing that was like the physical choice. But now I might skip a workout just to snuggle the boys. And like the energy I get from like doing those things that are uh, and being in that space where I'm like, I love these two so much. And I love to like, just have the, that time that's so short. Like for me, that is really, really important is like that feeling, right? That those like moments that you're never going to look back and be like, I shouldn't have done that. Right. Like, like those are the things that you're like on your deathbed and you're like, thank God I took those extra moments to do those things. And so for me, that's really life giving too. And so I think that's part of when we say like building a remarkable life and a remarkable practice, not instead of one or the other is so imp impactful is to realize like, as your life becomes more fulfilling, you have more energy because you've done the work to put the structures and the like awareness in place that you can cultivate a life that has all of these facets. And then that should also be part of what drives your purpose too, because you want more people to live like this and to realize they can build it too. It's going to require hard work and effort, but almost nothing else, you know, everything requires work and effort if it's going to be valuable. So um, and I actually believe that's part of what we're meant to do is we're meant to expend our energy towards something. So a lot of this too is just recognizing like when you align these things, your mind, your body, your effort, it's now it's like you're never actually working because it's just like I would do this whether I was getting paid or not, right? And then if you can align it with like what Bobby said, like if I win, then I can also donate more money into chiropractic or into some of these other things that I find valuable. It's like that's again where the momentum just keeps growing yeah 100 percent um you know when you make it bigger than yourself huge things happen and so you know you talked there about family because family does that makes it bigger than yourself um mm -hmm. i spoke about donation or giving back because it makes it bigger than yourself when you can make it outside of you that's when amazing things happen and i would start guys as number one if you're listening to this podcast number one exercise whether you've done this or not if you have, go back and redo it to a new level of depth. But go back and re-clarify and identify what are your core values. And core values are those things in your life that are most important to you. And once you recognize what your core values are, and this takes an energy to put some work into that. And maybe we can do a podcast in the future about okay, how do you have a, how do you identify core values? But once you identify your core values, then you want to try and live in alignment with those core values. Do things that actually are aligned with those core values and not out of alignment. One of our top core values is health. So if I'm building this kick-ass business, but it's coming at the expense of me working out, me eating crap, me skipping meals, you know, me relying on energizing drinks, I'm going to feel out of integrity. I'm going to feel ordinary, even if I'm building a kick-ass business. And I'm going to end it on this. You said something amazing there where you said, you know, we have this great lifestyle, which is all encompassing in chiropractic. I like to call it the chiropractic lifestyle. And then we wish that and want it upon more people. That's exactly what it is. You should be the walking billboard for that in your community. This is why in the remarkable practice, we're very intentional. We teach you how to build a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life. That's the whole thing. You can have it all. And, you know, my final thoughts on this is I, I really didn't like when people used to say to me in the past, well, you can't have it all. Right? It's going to come. One thing has to happen at the expense of another. And I'm here to tell you that it's absolute bullshit. You can <laughs> have it all. Okay. You can have it all though by creating alignment. You can have a remarkable practice. You can have a remarkable life. You can have a remarkable marriage. You can have remarkable health. You can have remarkable finances. You can have remarkable relationships. Okay. You can have it all as long as you identify core values and you create alignment with your core values and then your daily routines and habits. 
So awesome conversation. Uh, we want to keep this one short and snappy for you guys so you can really just extract from it and you can take things that you can implement straight away tomorrow. It could be for you to start working out regularly. It could be for you to clean out your nutrition. It could be for you hey, snuggle with the boys a little bit more often. <laughs> All right. any, final, any final words? No, just chiropractic has taught us that life happens through us, right? And so recognize your practice and your fulfillment in your life is not going to be different from that. And so the work you do on, on the inside is going to pay off on the outside. Spot on. Love it. Guys, you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. If you've enjoyed this, hey, please, guys, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the subscribe button. What that'll do is it will keep you updated whenever new episodes are released. And we've got some rocking, rocking episodes coming up. You guys, I'm super excited for them. So you guys are going to love them. So you don't want to miss them. We're going to be going deep into new patient stuff as well. So new patient attraction marketing. So if you're enjoying this, guys, three dots in the top right-hand corner of the application. Hit subscribe to show. And that way you'll get updated as soon as those new episodes are released. Later, well, uh, awesome as always. I'll catch you guys and I'll see you really soon. See you later. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Remarkable Practice podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic, and what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like the podcast, please subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, please click the links in the show notes to schedule a call.